Sean Woodley, Locked On Raptors here with Pat, the designer, Locked On Bulls. Can you feel it? The play-in game is tonight, that 9-10 sweetness. Pat, you're very excited for this, right? High stakes, single elimination basketball. This is what it's all about. I, I hate playing. Uh, I hate to play in tournament. <laughs> I hate to play. I think it's you the do. dumbest. Thing, I think it's the dumbest thing the NBA has ever come up with. But wow. I am glad because I get to talk about the Bulls for one more night, mm -hmm. uh, at least. And then uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we we come out with a win, and I'll talk about them again. I don't know. We'll see. It is like that very uh, heavy time of year for us daily podcasters, really, really hoping we can milk more games out uh, <laughs> really just to funny. avoid the <laughs> long, long off season of having to come up with stuff to talk about every day. But yeah. you don't like the play in, huh? I, see, I am fully bought into it. I know that the Raptors being in it is not something that most Raptors fans are happy about. And, yeah. you know, a lot of folks wish they just kind of tanked down. I'm not a tank fan. And so I think having more things to play for in the regular season is cool and good. And I actually really enjoyed my basketball watching over the last month of the season, which is not a thing I think I was able to say when yeah. it was just a battle for the eight seed. I guess my thing is... I like that it makes it so being the top six matters and you know, there's no great nobility in being the seventh or eighth seed. So like, why should you get rewarded for it? You got to go through this hell tournament in order to get to the playoffs. I think it's fine. You're not a fan. That's fine. Let's um dig in Pat to, I think the thing to start off with here is just sort of the general tone around the teams that we cover going into this game. Uh, you know, I think both Raptors and Bulls fans have certainly had a certain amount of angst about the way their respective seasons For have sure. gone. What's the vibe in Chicago right now? Are Bulls fans excited about this at all? Is there um, any sort of optimism left with this Damar, Levine, Vucevic trio? Like, well, what's the sort of vibe coming into this uh, and the sort of general tone and tenor of Bulls fans as this game gets rolling tonight? I think most Bulls fans believe that this is a, this is a step back, right? Like, you're not supposed mm -hmm. to be here. Um, I think that a lot of people in the second half of the season got to see the effects of not having a point guard or a realistic point guard on the roster until Pat Bev shows up. All of a sudden, a lot of these guys can play basketball again. That was kind of weird, right? Like, who would have <laughs> thought Pat Bev would be the key? But it's just about having guys in the right position, having Zach Levine actually be able to be your shooting guard instead of your point guard, shooting guard, small forward combo, having DeMar DeRozan be able to just be that assassin, Boots be able to be your big, right? Like, those are things that matter. So I think the, the tone around Bulls fans right now is you're mad that they're here. Like, they shouldn't be here. You're also mad at the organization for, my, for not putting a team out there that addressed a ton of the needs that you had coming into last season. We talked about shooting. We talked about rebounding. The one thing that scares most Bulls fans about uh, about uh, uh, the Toronto Raptors is, for some reason, Billy Donovan just loves to play uh, 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 Alex Caruso at the power forward position <laughs> versus Pascal Siakam. Like, that's a normal thing. You know what I mean? Like, so... I, I think I think that's what a lot of Bulls fans' contention is, especially coming into this game, is that there's not a belief that the best roster is going to be on the court in crunch time in those important moments. It's not to say we can't compete. We can't play play well against you guys. Not to say we can't win this game. But it, it, there's just not a trust in what Billy Donovan and the Bulls organization is doing anymore. Billy Donovan believes in Alex Caruso like every Lakers fan believed in Alex Caruso uh, being like the second <laughs> of something, apparently. Yeah, him guarding Pascal That was a good Siakam. bar. That was a good bar. I like that. I'll give you that. I could, a thousand points, my good sir. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, as far as where the Raptors fan base is at, I, I think it's a little split. You know, I, I think there is some genuine happiness with the way the season finished and honestly like not dissimilar finishes to the season for the Raptors and Bulls obviously the Yakub Pertl edition way more prominent and loud than the than the Pat Beverly edition but both yeah. teams found really good starting fives to close the season with both were really good defensively uh, both really stunk on offense like pretty similar yeah. arcs for these teams I think it's maybe a little bit less depressing for the Raptors, <laughs> even though this also bit a bit of a step back season, you know, you had 48 games last year, the five seed, it's all very exciting. You come into this season, there's all this expectation and it just doesn't work out. But I do think the improvements under Jakob Pertl suggest that there's a better basketball team now than there was at the start of the year, pretty comfortably. Yeah. Um, and I think there's wide variations in opinion as to like what the direction should be going forward. But I do think the Raptors are probably at less of like a big inflection point decision making wise of what their future is and the Bulls will be. I, I guess that's the question. Like, what are the stakes 
for the Bulls in this game? Like, it does the impact, like, does the outcome of this game impact at all what the offseason planning is going to be? Obviously, you would hope that one single game is not going to be the thing that a front office makes its decisions on, but yeah. the Bulls have made some interesting decisions. So I ask you, do you think that this game could incite some sort of direction change or shift or, or sort of change in the thinking for the front office and, and what is really on the line here for Chicago. So to me, it's, it's a, it's a twofold answer, right? It should, right? Like if you go out in here and, and, you know, Billy Donovan throws out four point guards against the longest lineup in the NBA, you know, <laughs> you probably should have some conversations about who your head coach is. The thing mm -hmm. is uh, what I believe to be true and what's probably actually going to happen are very dissimilar things. Uh, I, I think that the Chicago Bulls probably, don't go too far off of this lineup. Maybe they move off of DeMar DeRozan coming into this offseason. He's one of those like two year assassins we talk about coming mm -hmm. in and being a part of this team for years. It's come right like when when D Wade and uh, and uh, Pau Gasol went into the Hall of Fame. It was like former Chicago Bulls. I was like, we'll take whatever we can get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we'll take whatever we can get at this point. Like that's kind of how this feels like it's going to end up finishing out. But I think mm -hmm. the 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 one thing that I look at with um kind of what the Bulls are going to do is I look at where AK comes from, right? Mm. I, the last time Denver was a sub 30 win team, sub 30, which means you're, you're trying to win a good amount of games. You're probably trying to win more games than not and losing. And there's some very subpar Denver teams in there. It's 2002. So that means that they've competed every single year, just about since 2002, right before they got Carmelo Anthony, just trying to be a competitive team until they found their next guy that was going to get them over the hump. That's Jokic, of course. He comes in much later. But that is that is kind of the path that I expect the Chicago Bulls to take this offseason. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this game is a, uh, oh, my God, this has to be done or we're blowing this entire thing up. I fully expect to see a good chunk of this core back together, uh, if we can call it a core, back together. And maybe AK go out, try to add some shooting by moving on from DeMar DeRozan, try to add some draft capital. I, I don't see huge change. And Billy Donovan's already been extended. So, I mean, mm -hmm. like, we don't we don't even know how long, how far. He's here until, <laughs> in, in me and Hayes' mind, he's here until 25th. Oh, maybe there'll just be like an off-season coach swap between Billy Donovan and Nick Nurse, as it seems like maybe the Nick Nurse runway is. Listen, uh, uh, you send Nick out. Nurse my way, I will <laughs> gladly send you back Billy. <laughs> is this what we do and then we meet in the play in again next season and it's like oh. we're back okay we're back yeah <laughs> then you can officially declare these teams on the treadmill of mediocrity that's for damn sure um stakes wise for the raptors i, I think it's probably a little lower you know I, I think the nick nurse thing has maybe already been sort of quietly decided upon considering the comments he had a couple of weeks back it, you know maybe things get you know smoothed over everything goes well they get into the playoffs and yeah. give the bucks a scare and everyone's happy and they keep on rolling it but i do think there's going to be change regardless of what happens how big the change is i don't think really depends on the outcome here for the raptors um but it's certainly you know you go and get waxed by the bulls at home maybe that makes you think about things for me though i do think like the last 26 games with Jakob purtle that was really the sort of hey what do we got here this yeah. is the information that actually matters for off-season decision making more than what happens in the, these one-off games. We're going to come back on the other side, Pat, get into a little bit more in terms of interesting players to watch in this game, matchups we got an eye on, that type of stuff, and uh, all that more. We're going to come back, do that in one sec. But first, let me tell you about Basketball GM, Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. I guess we could have Pat on the screen while we do this. Hey, Why not? He's very good at it. So we should uh, give him the shout-out here. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is the coolest game you're going to play if you are the fan of sports sims. Maybe you are like a 2K player who just goes in and sims to the offseason, that is what this is essentially all about. You get to put together your team, you get to draft, deal with challenging personalities, players and coaches and the like, hiring the right coaches and assistants, drafting, training, free agency, trades, all that good stuff as you ride the ups and downs of multiple seasons, all in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want to. Pat, I heard through the, the, uh, the grapevine that you became the first ever team to lose a series, went up 3-0, and it happened to be in the NBA Finals, and your owner fired you for it. So congratulations for that. <laughs> he didn't that's fire me. Of... He oh. didn't fire me, but okay. he was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I've won him four championships, it is what it is. 
Unreal. Anyway, you can deal with your uh, persnickety owner as well. The <laughs> Ultimate Pro Basketball GM, Locked On Bulls and Raptors listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when you use the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure you go check it out. To download the game, just visit probasketballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up on the app stores. That's probasketballgm.com. Ultimate Basketball GM, start your dynasty today. All right, Pat, I, I want to dig into some specific players, and I want to start with the patron saint of the play-in, Patrick Beverly. Of course, late season addition to the Bulls, under the radar, has very much helped as we discussed off the top. But I want to just sort of get your read. Like, is there talk about the mystique of Patrick Beverly's play-in cachet in Chicago? Does this actually feel like it's going to matter in this game? Any little thing can matter in a one-off game, whether it's Patrick Beverly trying 25% harder because he's a maniac about the play-in or whatever else it might be. I have to, like, we got to get into the weirdness of it. It's one game. Patrick Beverly feel, feels like he might be the agent of chaos and weirdness for this game on the Bulls side of things. I'll dig into that from the Raptors' perspective in a sec, but uh, Patrick Beverly, what, what, you, what you got on sort of the, the play-in mystique and the, the sort of aura he carries coming in here after standing on the table so exuberantly <laughs> last year with the Wolves. I think I think the thing with Pat Bev is that uh, with with this team coming in here, right? Like he's he is the heartbeat, and, and and literally going into the trade deadline, the buyout market, we literally said there's probably not going to be an acquisition of the heartbeat of your team at the buyout. I was wrong. He's absolutely the heartbeat of this Chicago Bulls team. He's the reason why Zach Levine and, and DeMar DeRozan is, have started to click at this perfect time. Bulls uh, over the second half of the season since the All-Star break, like you said, have been a top defensive team in the NBA. Haven't scored the basketball well, but have had elite scoring performances from Zach Levine and from DeMar DeRozan. Uh, I think that's the, the part that, to me, really gets uh, uh, the Chicago Bulls a chance in this game, I guess you can say, because it does feel like, right, like you're going to have somebody who's going to force this team to put their best foot forward, at least on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I think that Pat Bev, I was trying to look it up here. I believe Pat Bev versus Fred Van Vliet as well has been a, a pretty good matchup in the favor of Pat Bev. Mm. Um, but I think the biggest thing at the end of this is with him, you you really just have to look at the intensity that he brings and the leadership that he brings and how that gets everybody else moving in the right direction. That's the biggest thing that he actually offers to this team mm -hmm. over over anything. It's not right. Like if you're scared of Pat Bev from the three point line, like you're having a bad day. <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie to you, you're having a bad day if he's shooting eighty percent from the three point line. We will beat you handedly if he shoots well from three. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. That's like the one way in which this really goes haywire for the Raptors is they put all their resources into stopping DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine. They use OG on DeMar. Maybe they send two to the ball with Zach, and it just swings around, and eventually it's death by Pat Beverly and Pat Williams <laughs> and what other Pats you got on the team. Pat the designer, all hey, of it. Hey, how like, you doing? We all out here, man. Yeah. What's your what's your catch and shoot game like, Pat? Is it uh, uh I, it depends on from where. You know, corner three, I got you. I'm DJJ. I'm DJJ. I'm DJJ. You know, corner three, I got you. Yeah, outside of that, it's it's uh it's, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Yeah, hey, fair enough. Uh who among us doesn't struggle from above the break? Uh the Toronto Raptors certainly do, basically, <laughs> as a team. So when you look at the Raptors, Pat, Beverly is, for me, the guy who I'm just like, this guy could really just, like, F it all up and yeah. make this just a nonsensical outcome just because that's what happens in single elimination basketball games. Nonsensical stuff happens all the time. Re re regression to the mean does not take place over 48 minutes of basketball. Is there a player on the Raptors where you look across and you're like, Oh God, this guy, this yeah. guy in a, in a one-off game, like this is going to end poorly. Who you got there is he maybe is sort my, of an under the radar guy. He is my favorite guy. <laughs> uh, arguably right underrated in the NBA, in my opinion. Okay. Gary Trent Jr. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I love Gary Trent. And I just mm -hmm. think that he is a, a, a player that I, I've looked at a lot of Raptors games, right? And just been like, why don't they use him 
so much more often. I don't know if that's how Raptors fans feel about it, but I just I I, I love what Gary Trent can bring from a from a shooting perspective. Now maybe it's a it, it, versus the Bulls, it's a lot better, right? Like usually people become great versus the Chicago Bulls, but he's the guy <laughs> to me that I look at and I'm just like like he's the one that really could off put things because like I was saying with with Fred Van Vliet, right? Uh, Van Fleet. I mean, he's only scored twenty plus against Pat Bev one time. So mm. Pat Bev's kind of got his number. I think the last game uh, he played 35 minutes, three points, six rebounds, nine assists. Yeah. In fairness, it, that was his first game back after paternity leave. Facts, and facts, he's a little rusty, facts. but that's, yeah, it was not his banner night. Let's one for 11, way. one for yeah. 11, you know? So, so, but yeah, Gary, Gary Trent to me is, is the guy that I look at. And I'm just like, that's the one that's probably, if, if we're going to lose this game, I see him going for like 35. I mean, that's the thing is Gary Trent Jr. It's very feast or famine with him, it seems. And like when he's bad, he is really bad and, and really detracts from what you want to do. He That said, for the most part this season, he's been pretty reliably good and, and someone who has been, you know, pretty I've been pretty comfortable with him as like sort of the the key spacing option for the team. The problem is they have like three really reliable spacers after <laughs> yes. that. It's tricky, and you know, one game is going to be so I think tied to three point variance and all the weirdness that can go down. Uh, and, and so it's yeah, it, it great. Like it, Gary Trent Jr. could go two of 11 from three, the Raptors lose, he goes six of 11 from three, the Raptors win. It really could be that simple when you're talking about a single game and the Raptors' dependence on him for his three point production. Uh, he missed a lot of time at the end of the year. He got back for the final couple games, looked really good against the Bucks B team on Sunday. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. But yeah, a Gary Trent Jr. heater is often the difference between the Raptors winning and losing the way they're constructed and the, the, just because of the limited shooting they have on hand. And with the challenges, I think you're going to see Fred Van Vliet face in uh, Pat Bev, Alex Caruso, if they take him off of Pascal, that type of stuff. If they run Pascal, Fred, pick and roll and have... That just the switch that action, perhaps you're going to see Caruso switched on to Fred, all that stuff. Like, I, I, I do think it's going to be a bit of a more difficult game for Fred to really make his mark offensively. I think his playmaking will probably be just fine, but shooting wise, like just kind of getting his own looks off, that might be a bit of a challenge. And so, yeah, it opens up Gary Trent Jr. and OG Ananobi's three point uh, barrage is really the most important thing for the team, not to mention the sort of odd threes you get from a Scotty or a Pascal or a Precious Achua, which can swing things. As well, we're going to come back on the other side, Pat, get into some other matchups and, and, and sort of intricacies, and then we'll get predictions. I already gave my prediction for the for the game on yesterday's Lockdown Raptors, <laughs> but we'll get yours, see where you're at, and I'll reiterate mine for the Lockdown Bulls folks. Uh, we will get to that in just one sec, but first, got to tell you about our dear friends over at FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. You know me, Lockdown Raptors listeners. I'm as big a baseball fan as a basketball fan, maybe even more big, big of a baseball fan. I love them Bluebirds, and uh, you can go and bet on the Bluebirds or the Chicago White Sox or the Chicago Cubs. Ever heard of them? Over at FanDuel, and right now is a great time if you're a new customer because you can get set up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Lockdown. On sign up, place your first bet, and get up to one thousand dollars back and back in bonus bets. If you don't win, don't miss your chance right now for a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com/slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball, the NBA, and of course the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, we continue on here, rounding out the show. Pat, the designer, locked on Bulls, Sean Woodley, locked on Raptors as we continue to sort through our thoughts ahead of the Raptors-Bulls game. I want to ask you this question, Pat. There's one reason the Bulls win this game? What is it? Like, this thing has gone right, therefore this means the Bulls have a very good shot of winning. What is that one thing? We are living in the sweet life of Zach and Kobe. Uh, Kobe White <laughs> being a, uh, a a real key in this. I think that uh, getting those two going offensively is going to be huge because there's the listen the the Raptors do one thing better than anybody I've ever seen. Passing lanes do not exist. Mm -mm. So you've got to be able to knock down that three ball. You've got to be able to find open looks, got to be able to play at the perimeter. I think that that will open up the passing lanes a little bit more and allow opportunity for those two to be able to get to the bucket, get to the cup, and try to get some finishes down there. I think Vooch and Podol kind of cancel each other out. Podol's a better defensive version of Vooch. Vooch is a better offensive version of Podol. 
Um, and Poldle's just much younger, so that's <laughs> nice. Uh, that, that, that's 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 very nice. Um, I think Siakam is is a, a problem for anybody that plays against them. Like we we talked about Fred Van Vliet and how him and Pat Bev. I mean, I don't expect Pat Bev to go off for forty if he's right, like shutting down and or, or helping to shut down uh, Fred Van Vliet if he even can do that yet again. I think that those are the two that I'm going to be looking at the most and saying if there's going to be offense here. Uh, I'm looking at Zach and Kobe in this, but you, I, I will say this: Demar does love to try and kill you guys. Mm-hmm. He, he, it, it is one of his favorite things to do. It did not work in the last game, but it is one no, of his. The favorite. thing about OG and Anobi is he kind of blows up your best laid intentions a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it it, it kind of uh, it, that's the one thing where I'm like, okay, let's let's see if if Demar kind of can go off and just have that like. I'm going to put Toronto out of the playoffs moment. That would be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. But I think the guys that I most expect to have opportunity, not can you knock them down? That's the question. But opportunity is Zach and Kobe. Yeah, for me, as far as the one thing that's gone right if the Raptors win, I really think it's got to be like just crashing the offensive glass successfully. The Bulls, I talked about it on yesterday's show. The Bulls, as much as you you, you shake your head, really good at limiting the offensive glass for the other team. Uh, This season, I had the numbers available. Uh, Fourth in the league in opposing offensive rebounding percentage allowed. That's good. Uh, Second in the league at number of points allowed per opponent miss. That's also really good. The Raptors are big. The Bulls skew small a lot of the time in their best lineups. I do really wonder, that's going to be a really key battleground, I think, is can the Bulls maintain their sort of competence cleaning up the defensive glass if they skew a little smaller and the Raptors start to crash like maniacs? You know, Chris Boucher often has big nights against the Bulls. Uh, you know, often. I think his offensive rebounding <laughs> is going to be massive here. Uh, it, it's just a, it's a really interesting wrinkle because that is the thing that drives the Raptors. Their first shot half-court offense sucks. It's really bad, much like the Chicago Bulls. They overcome it by crashing the offensive glass like Maniacs, one of the three best teams in the league at doing so this season, three or four. Um, they, they do it really, really effectively. They do it from all angles. They do it with wings. They do it with their bigs. And I uh, I think where the sort of offensive rebounding situation sorts itself out is probably going to determine this game because I don't think either team is really going to have all that much fun in the half court. I I think the defenses have been really stout. I think it's going to be kind of a nasty rock fight of a game, and I I could really see the offensive rebounding situation kind of determining things for the Raptors here. If there is a thing that happens that causes the Bulls to lose, the one thing that like, okay, that happened, they're screwed, nothing they can do about it, uh, what you got aside from like first quarter catastrophic injury or something like that, knock on wood, we don't want that, but uh, you know, you can't use that as your crutch answer. Uh, what's your sort of one thing that can't go wrong lest the Bulls lose this game? I, I'm going to be honest with you, there's a ton of answers I can give. I don't need a crutch in this one. I just... <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in the play-in, dog. There's, there's options. We got options here. Um, no, if there if there was one thing that that I really think the Bulls would would cause the Bulls to struggle the most, it would be what they've kind of done all season with getting off to bad starts. Mm. Um, the Chicago Bulls often tend to play from behind in a lot of these games, and versus an offensive team, right? Yeah, you can get hot, you can start to find your way back into it, but again. The, the Raptors are one of the best teams with passing lanes. They're one of the best teams with disrupting their opponent's offensive ability. They're one of the best teams with defensively as a whole, right? And, and then on top of that, when it comes to rebounding numbers, the Raptors are probably going to be on top of the Bulls in that as well. So you're not going to have a ton of opportunity to really get yourself back into this game. We've seen the Bulls start out against, I mean, I, I believe the second game versus the Lakers, we, we got out to a 23 to to, to three uh, a start in the first mm-hmm. quarter, right? Like those things can't happen. Sometimes the the Bulls are a team that plays really, really, really well at certain moments. Mm. And when it ain't there, it ain't there. <laughs> <laughs> and so like legit, like it is like a light switch, like in the third quarter, just be like, hey, Zach, so you're going to go eight for nine from the three-point line in this quarter. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're back in the game. And it makes you feel better at the end. But there's so many games we could talk about this season that start off the first half of the game, the first quarter of the game, the first part of the third quarter, where the Bulls just can't find any kind of offense to go Mm -hmm. along with really good defense. I mean, how the starting lineups sort of fare against one another. I mean, they've both been lineups since Pat Bev arrived and since Jakob Pertl arrived. Like the... 
they've been ridden heavy. Like they're somehow both in like the top 30 in minutes played for lineups in the league. And they've barely had any time together. Uh, like February 10th on is when yeah. they're accruing these numbers. They've been yeah. leaning on these groups. The bulls have been like a plus 15 net rating. The Raptors about a plus 10, uh, two of the best lineups in basketball really since the trade deadline. I, I'm really curious to see how that sort of tete-a-tete -tete goes. The game that they played on February 28th was the very first game for the Raptors starting five as yeah. it exists right now. So there was not really any sort of cohesion. They hadn't been playing together. It's been a really good lineup ever since. The Bulls, it was just the third game for Pat Bev in that game as well. So while we got to look at these teams kind of as they're currently constructed, yeah. it's not really i don't think it's going to tell the story considering you know the sort of chemistry and the layers of adding new stuff in that have certainly come for both lineups since those the, the first early days of their times together um it's fascinating i that the start's going to be massive like can one of these teams kind of uh, apply some sort of advantage with their starting five for the Raptors, I think if they lose this game, it's because they completely break down when it comes to their rim defense. Um, you know, the Bulls shot 16 of 21 in that February 28th game, and if they could do anything, it's it's the, they got quick guards who can get downhill. Zach Levine, Demar, Kobe White, all down the list. Like, yeah. this is a team, the Raptors, that has struggled with quick guards in the past. Their big wins, wings are really good at hawking passing lanes and guarding up in size. Sometimes they can really struggle with smaller dudes who can slip by. Fred Van Vliet's on-ball defense has been wax and wane this season. Certainly better since Yaka Pertl arrived, but definitely not a strength of his this year. He's much more of a, of a help defender where he really excels. And I could see the Raptors potentially skewing smaller in this game. You know, they closed without Jakob Pertl in the game on February the 28th. They went Gary Trent Jr. in that small ball look. Scotty Barnes exploded for a massive fourth quarter playing the five. Um, you know, that was all fun and good. But when you don't have Jakob Pertl on the floor, where you don't have him near the rim, which he might not be all the time with Nikol Nikola Vucevic out there, I do wonder how that sort of all warps. I wonder if maybe they even, like, stick Yak on a Pat Beverly or a Caruso just to make it so he can kind of hang by the rim and yeah. not pull himself too far out because those backline rim defense breakdowns were the reason the Raptors were so bad in the early part of the season. And they've been much better since Yak arrived, but you can pull him away from the basket and create all of those problems once over again. And if there's like a parade to the bucket because the Raptors got to go small or because Vooch is pulling Yak too far away from the bucket and there's no good help defense there, this is where Scotty Barnes and Pascal Siakam are incredibly important. Uh, that could be big time trouble for the Raptors. Pat, got to ask you. Who you got? I picked the Raptors just not very confidently. It was a very, <laughs> I think the Raptors will win type of situation yesterday. But uh, where are you? Where are you? How are you feeling? What, 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 what's your gut telling you about this game? Listen, I, I think the Bulls will win. Uh, you know, what I mean? <laughs> like I, it's the same thing, dude. Like, like listen. We, Do you want me to find a coin and just flip it on the podcast and I'm, we can decide that way? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, right? Like, when when you think about I, – I think the Raptors have kind of been the same thing, right? Like, they're a lineup that can beat everybody. Mm -hmm. And they're a lineup that can lose to everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, it is, it is maddening in Chicago. I have watched the Chicago Bulls beat the best of the best on multiple occasions, handedly dominating – uh, uh, efforts versus the Milwaukee Bucks and Boston Celtics uh, going out there playing in a double overtime game versus the Philadelphia 76ers getting the win finally over Joel Embiid right like I've watched the Bulls literally beat the best of the best I've also watched the Chicago Bulls lose to the Indiana Pacers and Houston Rockets <laughs> multiple times <laughs> Multiple times, like game wins. Don't worry, the Raptors like, have, I think, three times. losses to the Pacers this year as well. I think they got swept by the Pacers or something close to it. Really bad. Yeah, it, it, it's so I, I, I feel like the Bulls can win this game. I feel like the effect of Pat Bev, DeMar DeRozan coming back to Toronto, uh, Zach Levine finally getting another opportunity to try and get himself into the playoffs. I think those things will matter and that the Bulls will come out with the win. But I've also watched this Bulls team, like, get dominated just by people that can run a little bit harder. <laughs> like, so how about this? In lieu, <laughs> in lieu of official predictions in a coin flip game, <laughs> I don't have a coin, Pat, but I do have, shout out to all the American listeners from the Bulls side who are about to learn about the Canadian Football League, but I have a Hamilton Tiger Cats coaster 
All right. We love the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Uh, the, the most, uh, not the most successful franchise in CFL history. Far from it. Either way, uh, Mark <laughs> Tressman was the head good coach of there. the uh, Alouettes, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Ain't that Mark the, Tressman, uh, yeah. The, Johnny the, Manziel uh, played a hot minute Johnny for the Tiger Man- Cats in the preseason. Uh, that was fun. Gotcha. Um, you know, we could go on down the dignitaries. Danny McManus, Henry Burris, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you actually, Bears fans know about Henry Burris. There we go. I know that about they, Henry Burris and Mark Tressman. There's common ground. Henry Burris. I <laughs> Way. Mark Tressman, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. We're too far down the rabbit hole. Either way, Hamilton Tiger Cats coaster. I got the Hamilton logo on the front. I've got a blank side on the back. I'm just going to flip it, call it in the air, uh, and if you win, the Bulls will win. If not, the Raptors will win. This is the prediction that we all need. Here we go. In the air. Let's go. Tiger Cat side. It is the blank side. The Toronto oh, well. Raptors are going to win. The 9-10 play-in game. You heard it here first. It's all on me. Now everybody's it's mad at me. unbelievable, Pat, that you did this. Uh, <laughs> I feel really bad for our tourist oh, this and all of the, the, the pieces you're going to have to pick up after this. It's miserable. Uh, anyway, congrats to the Raptors, I suppose. And congrats <laughs> to the Tiger Cats for getting some play on an NBA podcast. Uh, Pat. We're going to round it there. This was a blast, as it always is when we chat, man. Uh, obviously, Locked on Bulls, everyone go check it out. Locked on Raptors, same deal. You can follow our shows, follow us on all the different socials and all that good stuff. Support us on YouTube. And uh, we appreciate all the lovely listeners, whether Raptors or Bulls fans. Thanks for hanging out. Enjoy the game. And listen to our recap episodes after the coin flip game is finished as well. That'll be a blast, too, for one of us. Uh, you know, we'll talk about draft position for the other side of things. Although, maybe not the Bulls, because... Little, uh, top that's four a whole different pick thing. out the yeah, door yeah. Yeah, we'll, 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 see, we'll see what's going on with that man i don't know no. for raptors fans who are depressed about their station just uh look at the bulls pick sitch and you're, you're, you'll feel a little bit better uh we could we'll all there. be happy that we're not the timberwolves <laughs> you know what you know what <laughs> that's how i live that, life at this point <laughs> that is the way to go into this play-in game whatever happens not the wolves. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Enjoy the play in game. Bye bye. Peace.